We're talking about the good works that God has prepared for us and the dead works that we need to repent for repent of that's hebrews 6 first foundation of the six foundational teachings of the church first one repentance from dead works things that i'm doing i even think i'm doing it for god but god is not in it because god never asked me to do it and i god will not do it with me because he didn't want me to do it he will always be there he will never leave me never forsake me but he will not walk with me he will not work with me because I need to get into the place understanding how to hear and how to do the good works. Amen. You are still here. Remember, remember at the end of the day, Solomon, with all the wisdom in the world and what he wrote down, and he's there for centuries, yes, for the New Testament church, everything he wrote down, all the wisdom, and then all the wives, a thousand of them, and then all the riches, Everything that we can work for, everything that we can pray for, everything where a lot of our strategies are into the place that there will be financial security and things will happen. After all the wisdom, all the wives, all the riches, he come in Ecclesiastes and he says what? Meaningless, meaningless, meaningless. All vanity, all in vain, all is meaningless. What type of gospel must I give people? When, I'm, when somebody would look at you, look at me and say, where's the God of love? You know, I serve God, I pray. Oh, and the word says, I pray and God will direct your steps and he will protect you and you will do this and you will do that. And then the missile on my house and my children blasted away and my mother gone and my wife. And the guy living next to me, no missile on their home, but he's cursing God. He's, he's not serving God. Give me the gospel. Give me the gospel of a father who loves. And so many things that we don't understand. And you know, the more you're going to come to know God, the more humble you're going to become to know that you know nothing. The guy that thinks he knows a lot about the gospel, a lot about this, and a lot about that, that's many times the arrogant guy with a religious spirit. But the guy that really come close to God, that's the guy that realized, you know, I actually know nothing. Why? Because you see more and more of this awesome knowledge of God. And in comparison, me, in comparison to this awesomeness of this fantastic, splendorous God, I'm nothing and I know nothing. Hello? Are you still here? May God help you, may God help me. So that at the end of the day, this guy that had all the riches, all the wives, all, all the wisdom, he comes, he says, I've seen all these things happening out there and it feels like all in vain, all meaningless. And then at the end of Ecclesiastes, he comes to this one point and he says, one thing I understand, fear God and keep his commandments. The only thing I can tell you, what is understandable, is respect him and do what he says. That's all. And that's hear and obey. That's the whole soul teaching. And please, so I urge you, get into that. Get into the word foundation so that you lay foundations accurately for your life, man. The foundations so that you will build a house when the storm comes, when the storm comes, when the wave comes, when the storm will come and the storm not just sent by hell, the storm sent by God for to shake heavens and earth so that what is unshakable will stand and that is a house, that is a life that is built on the revelation of who God is. Lay the foundations right for your life. Amen. So that you will understand the key, the key principle of I have respect for him. Therefore, I will hear him, I will obey him. That's it. Not because I understand him. And I'm probably talking about understanding in the sense of the logic. Understanding the word in how to love him. Yes, that will be there. Truth will set you free so that you can understand and come to know him. But that brings us in this place into labor in light. This understanding this way of I do because I respect him and I heard that what he said and that's why I'm doing it I labor in the light everybody labor in light 
Okay, can we go? There we go. First scripture. We have Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men in such a way. Everybody say, such a way. In such a way that they see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Our light must shine. Yes, that's wonderful. But it must shine in such a way. Through what? Through what we say, no, through what we live. Through the good works that you're doing that God has called you to do. You can do very good things for God, but not with God and not for God. You think it was for God. You, you were genuine in your heart, but the light is not shining in such a way that it will glorify God through your works. Because God is not in your works. He's in your life. He's not in your works. Your works will be burned away. What a waste of a life on earth. God is in your life, but not in your works. Because you didn't hear it from God. But in my works... People must see God. The heathen, the guy that is not serving God. And glorify who? Before men. Before the church. No. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they will see the good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. It's Daniel, it's Joseph, it's that heathen rubbish king. Where the people say, oh, they must worship you. He says, yes, no problem. Let them worship me. But then there's this guy... In his works, in what he says, in what he does. At the end of the day, this heathen king says, there's only one God. The God of Daniel. There's only one God. The God of Emil. The God of Adrian. The God of Yuan. That's the only God. And they must be able to, they, they know, don't know anything about this God. But they look at your life, they look at your works, they look at what you do. They look at your approach, you look, they look at your humility or the, your stinking religion. Look at your humili humility and they say, I don't know about the Christian God. But I just, if I look at his life and his works, I cannot believe this other God. Oh man. That is a light. Let your light shine in such a way. But when I'm so busy with other stuff and busy with my way of knowing things, with my confusion or my success or my stress or my anxiety or my whatever, the light will shine, but not in such a way. The light will shine, but you know when light shines in a certain way, it can throw shadows. Throwing shadows on the on Christianity, this Christian story, this Christian thing, that guy in the world. I, I've seen this Christian thing, but then what is the excuse? Why will they not serve Christ? Because I've seen the Christians. And then they talk about what? You've, you've heard that before. Because they are like this. They will preach to you. They will get this religious face. They will do this. They will do. But in their walk, <laughs> go and see how they live. They have more problems when us, than us. How? See how many divorces. See how many this. See how many that. See how many they call them Christians. And there's a saying, don't do business with Christians. It's a saying out there that people say that. So we say, God forgive us, but help us. That your light will shine so through us in such a way. And the such a way is the way that I do the good works that God has prepared for me to do. So you better get into the place to hear what is the good works that God has prepared for you. For tomorrow, for next week, for next year, for next month. Get into the strategies that you find from God. And do it with Him and for Him. Labor in light. So shine before men in such a way that they will see. And what they see... Because of what they see, they are irritated in what they see. Because they don't find an excuse why not to serve Christ. You don't give them the excuse why not to serve Christ. Because in the way that you love them, you're supposed to be irritated with them. And then you forgive them and you love them and you know, talk all the things of... And you're going through things and that guy just cruising through... Uh, not moaning and groaning about the situation in the country or situation in finances. But he is like content, you know, he's like content and he's 
thankful and he's this and he's all this. What I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me. Next one. But he who practices truth. Everybody say practices truth. Truth. You need to practice it. It's not hearing it on a Sunday. It's not hearing it when you have time with the word. It's not hearing it when grandma is giving you a scripture or this one, that, or mom is preaching again or this, this, this. You need to go and practice the truth. Otherwise, you're going to get bored with the truth. You are bored to hear a sermon, bored to read the Bible. Why? Because you didn't get into the place with the Holy Spirit to learn how to practice it. Go and read the manual, how to drive a car. And you read the manual, how to drive a car, and you read it, and you read it, and you read it, and you read it, and, but you never go and practice with a car. How bored are you going to get after five years of reading the manual of how to drive a car? I don't want to say hell, man. <laughs> You're going to freak out. You're going to freak out to go and read the manual again. But if you read the manual and you start to practice, practice, then you go back to the manual because this is not exactly, how must this be? How must that? And you practice until you get it right and you go back. There's life in it. So just read the Bible and don't practice the truth. Don't, don't get out there and practice can be very boring to read the Bible. Very boring to listen to a next sermon. May God help us. Amen. Practice the truth. Who does what is right. That guy comes out into the light. So that his works may be plainly shown. He must come out into the light that his works may be plainly shown. To be what they are wrought with God. Divinely prompted. Done with God's help. In dependence upon him. Okay, just write the five points there, please. First point. Practice truth with your works. Just five points. Practice truth with your works. You will practice the truth like we said. And practice means, why must you... The word practice is in a context of, you're not just going to get it right. You're not going to do it right the first time. Otherwise, there's nothing to practice. If you're just going to get it right the first time, you don't have to practice anything. So that scripture says, no, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to miss it. But practice, practice, practice. Be committed to the truth. Be committed to the truth. And practice how to be in the truth. Practice how the truth can set you free. That you will react not to the circumstance, not react to the facts of what people did to you or your failures or your weakness, but that you will go and go with the truth. Amen. Amen. Practice truth with your works. Not that you agree with the word. You agree what that pastor says or that brother says or your mom says or your wife. Ah, uh -uh. Second one. Come into the light with your works. Coming to the light. Now that's what we say. Yes. That's where we're going to get in trouble. Coming to the light with your works. Guys, for that day when everything can be burned away and you can see that you had a hell of a waste of a life. You're going to go to heaven, but you wasted your whole life on earth. Because in that day, everything will be tested and everything will come to the light in that day. But no, 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 when you walk with God and you labor in light, then tomorrow you labor in light. And what does that mean? Tomorrow your works come into the light. Where? Under God's guidance. God, this is what I do. This is what I want to do. I put it in the light. What are you saying? Give me your insight. Give me that what you say, how it must be done, what must be done with it. Because I don't want to waste my life. Are you with me? Come into the light with your works. That's come into the place where you find input, where you find insight, where you find correction, 
where you find adjustment, where you find alignment, where you find confirmation. Stay in that place, live in that place, let that be part of your lifestyle. Teachable spirit, open for discipleship. Get somebody to be accountable to, not somebody that's just going to encourage you and be your friend. Somebody that's going to get into your face and tell you your breath stinks. You need that guy. Ah, are you still here? <laughs> because somebody must help you that you will bring it to the light and that the fire will burn away that what is not from God. You don't want to stand ashamed one day. Still going to heaven, but no, you want it now. Amen. When you do that, my brother, you practice the truth. You come into the light for his guidance, for his input. Number three, let works be plainly shown. Says there, hey, let your works be plainly shown. You know, plainly is make it simple. It's a bad one. Just make it simple, stupid, or something like that. Make it simple. But why is it complicated? Why is Christianity complicated many times? Because I sit still with this issue. I justify myself with this. I go and do this with that. I, I have this thing about that person. You know that? I, one I cannot trust anymore. This one, he has this issue. I struggle. And it's really complicated. But what I said just now about Solomon... And all his wisdom, and I think he had some complications if he had a thousand wives. Definitely. Hmm. And with all the wisdom that he had to have, and all the money, and the root of all evil is, is greed. So there were made most probably some temptations. But at the end of the day, he had to make it plain. He had to make it simple. And he says, it's all vanity. It's all meaningless. But take this Plain, the simple principle. Fear God, respect God, and do what he says. That's all I can tell you. That's at the end of that life, the life of that man. Man of God. Are you here? Habakkuk. 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 That prophet. Chapter 1. He screams. It's, the word says he screamed. He cried out. Now I can ask somebody to cry out, but our religious... Stability could maybe be challenged. If I ask somebody to stand now and cry out. <clears throat> what am I saying? This man cried out and he said, God, you're not listening. I ask this and nothing happens. I pray and nothing happens. Whoa. <laughs> but then, unfortunately, that's where a lot of Christians, where their life ends. Not anymore in Jesus' name. We don't speak it over them. But then in chapter 2, oh man, that Habakkuk, that chapter 2, first five verses, that's breakthrough, breakthrough, that's breakthrough. I will stand on my watchtower. I will not sit in the tantrum of that prayer. I will not sit in that circumstance. I will stand on my watchtower. What are we saying? I will seek the light. I will go above my circumstances into my watch out to look down at my circumstances. But then he says this beautiful thing. And I will see what he is saying. Not I will hear what he is saying. I will see what he... Not I will see if God's going to say something. <laughs> he believes God will speak. And he believes God will open it up for you. That he will be able... To see what he is saying. Light. There will be light in that what must be there. There will be light in his words. God will open my eyes. When he speaks, my eyes will be opened. That's what he says. And then God, when God came, he says, be patient with a vision. When he tarries, just be patient. And write it in simple way that everybody can see it when they pass by. Just in the, not in the rush, but in the going. They look at your life and it's plainly seen. Plainly seen. Immediately. There's a simple, a simple message that is understandable through your life. And that is your good works. That God has prepared for you to do. Through that his works may be plainly shown. Plainly shown. Are you there? Next one. Let's go. 
Number four, let your works be divinely prompted. You can be prompted by anger. You can be, it can be prompted by fed upness it can be prompted by your negativity it can be prompted by your religious demon we don't have that anymore in Jesus name it can be prompted you know when people some say something you are so quickly either to defend so quickly to justify yourself so quickly to have yes but the he's also saying this divinely prompted with Making it plain is where there's not a truth with yes, but. Yes, but what about this? Yes, but that is not. A childlike faith, if you want to enter the kingdom as a child, is there's not a yes, but. It's yes and amen. And that's finished. Amen. May God help us with this childlike faith. Challenge to have that. Divinely prompted that you must know that you know. I'm going to give this guy a piece of my mind. Oh, is that what God would want to do? Make sure he says, I want to give this man a piece of my mind. And it's the piece that God has placed in here that I'm going to give him. <laughs> okay. May you be blessed with that. Amen. Driven by love, led by peace, joy of God is your strength. That is when you are prompted by the truth. The truth brings an excitement in you. The truth brings an energy in you that brings you to the place you are prompted to do. Okay, you are still there. Let the works be done with God's help. Last one. Let the works be done with God's help. God will not expect of you to do something that you can do on your own because God is jealous for a walk with you, jealous for the relationship. Everything is about relationship. John 17, 3. Hey, this is eternal life. They may know you and the one you sent, his son. But the knowing is in the walking. Knowing is not a mind full of information. That is knowledge that puffs up. That bring you in excellent religious pride. Excellent religious pride. And you call it, a, you are, you, you're distinguishing what is from God and what is not from God. What the, some Pharisee demon. Be set free from that Pharisee demon. Are you with me? But if you want to make it plain, look at your lifestyle. Look at what you do. And because in what you do, God will many times ask you something simple to do. Not for you to be poor, necessarily singing, and the jail is shaken. What if that is the one moment, yes. Wow, the power of God through, through Paul. That is just amazing. You know, he's just like singing and everything is shaken and he's out. And then he's praying for this and the demons gone and be, these people healed. And then he opened the door for the devil. Because look where he ended. Poor, I, we pray for Paul. He's in jail and he's telling us through his letters that he longed to see us. Oh, but God is not opening a door for him. I wonder where's the open door from hell, from the demons in his life that is now locked up there and he cannot get out. In the past, there was the power of God was on him. The hand of the Lord was on him, you know, and, and he just sing and everything is shaken and get out of jail. And, and what happened to him? Where did the anointing go? What a foolish, foolish evaluation in judgment of a man's life. Because he had to sit there and write the letters for New Testament church for more than 2,000 years to read the letters in all the nations of the earth. But if you identify him in the flesh, judge him in the flesh, how pathetic can we be? Not anymore in Jesus' name. Be careful how you judge other people around you. Works be done with God's help. With God's help. The more you do it with God, the more humble you will become. The more you do it with God, the more you will give Him the glory. When you see you're easily, people are drawn to you, just know you must get out of the way. You're not doing it with God's help. You're doing it with your gifts. You can be very accurate in your gift. You can be very accurate in your anointing that God has given you. You can be very accurate with a lot of talents and abilities. And people can be drawn to you instead of drawn to Christ. 
Labor in the light and Christ is the light. Amen. We go to the next one. Next verse. Okay. Let us then drop. Fling away. Everybody say fling away. I like that. Drop, fling away the works and deeds of darkness and put on the full armor of the light. If he says we must fling away, we must drop the works and deeds of darkness. That means like he's saying it's obvious that all are involved with works and deeds of darkness. What is that? That is you uh, cursing people here in the darkness and stealing from everybody and, 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 and cursing and lying. No, 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 no. The works of darkness... The deeds of darkness, it's where you are so deceived. You're in darkness and you do these deeds, you do these works, and you think you're doing it for God. You're not doing it for God. Because he never asked you to do the things, those things. God, in your name, in the name of Jesus, we prophesied. In the name of Jesus, we cast out the devils. In the name of Jesus, we did all these things. I don't know you. I don't know you. Nothing you've done, you've done with me and for me. Because I never told you to do that. Walking with me, knowing me, that's eternal life. You were busy with something else. Oh, come on, man. Are you here? Are you with me? To get out of the works of darkness is get out of also the works that you do with your smart idea. There's one that is really smart. That's the master. The mastermind. Amen. Get into the place of knowing you are nothing. You can do nothing if it's not him. John 15, 5. says, I can do nothing. The vine and the branches. says, I can do nothing except through him. That is a choice. You can do a lot of things through the power of the enemy or the power of what you have inside of you, your own abilities. It takes guts. To be dependent on God. Humanity tells you you're pathetic because you're dependent on all people. You cannot do your thing. You cannot stand. You cannot stand. If you stand and you grow up, you can do your thing. You're not so dependent on people. That's a major deception. If you have the guts to grow up, the more you grow, the more dependent you will be. I'm not talking about a hand. I'm not like talking about like being a parasite because you don't take your responsibility. You have a responsibility. But in all that, you position yourself in dependency. Responsibility to make sure you are walking in dependency. You have that? They say responsibility. responsibility. Dependency. dependency. That's if you grow up. If you become mature. Let us then drop, fling away the works of, and the deeds of darkness, what is in your hand, and put on the full armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Now we have the armor of God. It's all about the word of God. Amen? But the armor of light, first of all, my brother, you need to have respect for the armor. You don't have to put it on. And as long as the enemy can get you to read the word, to hear the song, and you, to hear the gospel now, and the Jesus, and you talk about Jesus, and you hear about Jesus. But when the name Jesus is said, it's not really, um, it's not really touching you anymore. It's not like you say, I don't want the name of Jesus to touch me. That's, that's rubbish, man. You will never say that. Hey? But it's just like you glide through. Somebody say Jesus, and it's, but the devil, when you use that name with respect, he's going to be in trouble. But as long as the church don't have respect for the name, they will not put on the full armor of light. And darkness, they will have to fight the darkness, but their fight is being deceived, not knowing what is God saying, what is God's will, where is he with me, where is this, what must I do with this? That's not necessarily dependency. Dependency is coming before God and say, yes, Lord, I need your guidance. But praise God that he's calling me out of darkness into his marvelous light. By his grace, sometimes organizing the circumstances to be shaken so that you are shaken and call out to him. Are you with me? Are you here? So when you are shaken, don't ask God first to deal with this shaking. 
ask God, God, what I'm supposed to do. Boat is shaken. God does not want to climb in the boat. We said that many times, many sermons. Jesus did not come there and he did not want to climb in the boat. The word says he, he wanted to pass them. But then, when they struggled, he went to the boat. And then he said to them, you little of faith. Thank you, Lord. It's time for encouragement, not the time to judge us. You know, we are just nearly drowned in this crisis. And then God come and he judges you. What did he say? In the light, you have such a lot of authority. You could have spoken to the storm. You had to speak to the storm in the name of Jesus. But when you fail, my brother, my sister, Jesus will come in his awesome grace and he will get into the boat. He will get into the boat. Are you with me? But that wasn't his plan. God said it. I believe it. That said also, D.L. Moody. So God said, get to the other side. My brother, my sister, Peter, Andrew, John, God said we must go to the other side. If he said it, he would enable us. He knows there would, have been, there would be a storm. So, and if he said we will go to the other side, we will get there because he said so. What God has said over your life, you stand on the promises, not to change the circumstances. You stand on the promises to fulfill your calling. You're still here. And the storm is just so, by the way, so that you'll grow in faith. <laughs> we like storms, eh? Ah, oh, yeah. Not one of us. But all things work for the good. For those who love him. Amen. Okay. If God can deal with the storm and he comes to the other side and there he hears this man. He's still full of demons. No, no iron chain can keep him oh man and the whole place fear that guy they have faith god's going to do something we just saw what he did to the storm next level what is he going to do in this place okay next one stand firm let nothing nothing move you always give yourself fully to the work everybody say work of the lord it's not just work for the Lord. It's the work where God is associated with the work. The work originated from Him. The work was an initiative from Him. As we say, we are His masterpiece, His uh, workmanship created, created to do, created to do the good works that He has prepared. There's a work of the Lord, not just a work for the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Labor in light. Everybody say labor in light. And then your labor is not in vain. My brother, my sister, your labor is not in vain. Then there will be 30, 60, 100 fold harvests in your life. There will be. There will be. It was my spiritual father when my spiritual mother cried when we received this 215 hectares and for free I laughed about it and we received it but he walked here 30 40 years ago he walked in the north with leaders God said to him a big piece of ground for a, for a school for a campground for a church for an old age home for this 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 he prayed here walked here declared the word nothing happened and he died and his wife cried and said his faith and his prayers were not in vain. And she had the privilege to see that before she died. Where a spiritual son just laughed at it, about it, me. And we received it for 7,000 rand transfer cost. 215 hectares. That is God. But you know, that's 30, 60, 100 fold harvest for what he labored for in the spirit. So we have God coming to Moses and say, okay, I punished my people enough in Egypt. So we're going to take them now to the promised land. No, 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 no. That's not what he said. He said, I've heard the cry of my people. There were people in Egypt crying to God. And you know, later they messed up and they died in the desert. So their prayers were in vain. No rubbish. Their praise is part of their legacy. 
the inheritance they give their children. What you pray today in the spirit is legacy for you and your children and your grandchildren. There's legacy from your parents, your grandparents, and whatever generation back that prayed for God's kingdom to come. If the kids didn't take it, didn't take it, didn't take it, you honor your father and your mother. You will inherit. Because inheritance is not two billion rand. Because inheritance is the prayer of generations to bring down that what God has for the generations. That's the biggest legacy you give your child. That's the biggest legacy you receive from your parents. If you know how to honor and respect and not to judge. Judge and you will be judged. That's how you bring a curse and generational curses on you. Judge and you will be judged. Okay, so what happened? This, these works that will have a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. These uncles and aunties, opas and omas, they cried to the Lord in Egypt. There were 60, 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. Where were their grandchildren that were walking in the desert, that learned in the desert when God speaks, you don't moan and groan, you shush and you just do. What the leaders say, you don't moan and groan and try to fire Moses and kill Joshua and Caleb. You don't do that. You don't fight with it. You just fear God and do. And after hearing that message for 40 years, and all of them died, and the new generation, they walked in and they saw Jericho. They saw the amazing, amazing, amazing miracles of God. 30, 60, 100 fold harvest two generations further for people that cried out to God in Egypt where God said to Moses I've heard the cries of my people God was moved by the cries of his people and that was a generation that brought forth legacy for the rest oh you still here stand firm they will be Reward for your labor. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. What you pray, what you stand for by faith in the Lord, that labor is not in vain. What you do when you do, do it for God and with God so that what you have will have eternal value. Where? Eternal value to worship God with that and say, God, what, I, what was done? It was for you. What I've done, I've done. It's not a shame. You're not condemned in heaven. But what you've done... It will have eternal value in your hand to put it before him and say, God, this was because of you, because of you, because of you. Amen. You kill the giant, then your children don't have to face 27 Goliaths brought forth through 10 wives of Goliath. Are you with me? Slaughter the giant for the next generation. And then they don't have to face a Goliath, but they can go further for how to inherit the land that God has for them. Yeah, let's not hear. All right, next one. You are a chosen race. What is your race? Maybe you must write there next time, chosen. You are a chosen race. Chosen race, a royal priesthood, dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of Him who called you from darkness into His marvelous light. <gasps> you with me? What are we saying? Chosen race. God came and said, You go to heaven, you go to hell. No, I'm just playing. You go to. No, 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 that's not the chosen. That chosen is, there's a uniqueness in you. God saw you and He got involved with you. God saw mankind and he got involved with mankind and he chose his only son to deal with the mess that we created. That is what he has chosen in his strategy based on his love that he so loved that he gave his son. You were chosen, you are unique, you are having the attention of your God. When I say, okay, guys, funny, come to the front. Don't have to. Funny, come to the front. What now? What now? He knows I have an idea about him. I chose him, but I'm involved with him. I'm focusing on him. I have a plan for him. I want to do something with him. I want to do something for him and with him. Are you with me? And that is God saying, 
I need you to know I'm focusing on you and I have plans for you. I have a purpose. I have a strategy with you. Chosen. Everybody say chosen. Chosen race. Royal priesthood. No. 1 Peter 2, 9. When he says a royal priesthood, we spoke about this 2,700 times in the church. You remember, Nicolette, you counted, hey? <laughs> royal priesthood. Royal priesthood. Royalty, priesthood. Kingdom of priests. The other translations. You're a kingdom of priests. What is Revelation saying? You're kings and priests. You will reign and rule eternity, for eternity with Jesus Christ as a king, you as a king, and you as a priest. King has to do with authority. Hello, focus. King with authority, priest with intimacy. So a royal priesthood, you have authority in the name of Jesus. Priesthood, I come to you for your name's sake. That's why you say, I do it with God and I do it for God. People say, no, I'm not working for God, I'm just working with God. That's, that's not theology, that's not right. The word says, whatever you do, do it as if unto the Lord. That is a priest. You minister to the Lord. Priesthood, you minister to the Lord. Priest with the high priest, Jesus, unto the Father. You hear? Jesus is king of kings. That's not just king of all those ha ha demonic kings. No. King of kings. You will rule and reign for eternity as kings with a king of kings. Are you with me? So why not, why waste time? Tomorrow stand with the authority in the name of Jesus. That Satanist priest that I prayed for, I didn't know it was a Satanist priest, otherwise I would have most probably followed my strategy of what must I do? I prayed for this guy, and then he fell down and he crawled up like a cook sister. <laughs> and, uh, but he made some noise also. And, uh, and, and he was like, and my most spiritual thought was I'm praying for this guy and he's going to die that's really what I thought and then I cried to the Lord yes but you know at the end of the day that thing left that the demonic medium and whatever but what shook me was he would do this and when I would say Jesus. He was like, wow! Like a thing that I couldn't believe. It's coming from a human being, that sound. You know the story. How in the army, it was behind the bungalow, and the guys went in the dark to the bungalow, and they ran out there <laughs> and said, there's a lion in the bathroom. <laughs> but we were behind on the outside. That's just to say to you how intense it was but my spirituality level was well here <laughs> this guy is gonna die I'm, the more i pray the more he's getting twisted and not getting breath and but every time when i said jesus it was like, wow my brother my sister as a king with the king of kings. You need to know the authority of the name of Jesus. So the more you can sing Jesus and hear Jesus and read the word about Jesus and, um, and the enemy will tell you to, and you know, he will try and encourage you to read it more, to read more, you know, about Jesus and hear Jesus so that you are more wara wara, just you heard about Jesus and you hear Jesus, but less and less respect. Less and less respect. For 30 years they heard Jesus, the son of Joseph. Jesus, we know Jesus. We know Jesus. Yes, we know Jesus. We played with Jesus. We walked with Jesus. We saw what Jesus did. And, this, and then at the end of the day, that's the only group where Jesus could not be recognized as the son of God. Because familiarity, familiarity, because of that familiarity, Jesus did nothing. He didn't do the works. And he left Nazareth. 
your familiarity with the name of Jesus, you will not understand how to be a king with the king of kings. May God help you that you have respect for the armor of light, armor of light, and the power of light. When darkness wants to come in, you put on the light, there's no fight. There's no fight. There's no fight with darkness. Millisecond, it's gone. It's gone. You don't fight the fear. Love of God, perfect love drives out the fear. You don't fight the anxiety. The peace of God will overrule the anxiety. Hello? You don't fight the darkness. You come into the light and light will fight the darkness. Oh, man. That's from a place of dependency. Are you still here? A royal priesthood. So right in the beginning, once again, when God took the guys from Egypt, he said, I will take them from Egypt. They cried, unto, uh, they cried to me and they cried unto me. I will take them now to the promised land that I promised their forefathers, Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. I will take them now into the promises. No, he didn't say that. He took them out and he said to Moses, tell him, I want my people to go to Canaan, what I promised them. No, he didn't say that. He said, let my people go to worship me in the desert. To worship me in the desert. That's all. You need to tell the enemy, God is calling me out to worship him. Doesn't matter the circumstances. Doesn't matter if you're going to worship him in the desert or in the promises in Canaan or here or there. God is calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light. To set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him. That is bragging about your God. That's bragging about his splendor, his majest majestic works. How? Through your deeds. How? Through what you say, through what you do. When people look at you and they say, there must be a God in heaven. There must be a God in heaven. Because his light is so shining in such a way that I cannot argue against what happened through that man's life. It's not possible that he had this wisdom. It's not possible that he could find that strategy. It's not possible. He didn't know everything about the situation. Where did he get all of that? I think we'll have to admit, I think, his God most probably exists, it seems to me. May that be your testimony. Amen. Special people. Special people. Understand your value in Christ. Guys, because when people say you're a mishap or you were this or you're a failure, you're that, why can it have such an impact on our lives? Some of you guys know how you were belittled in school or this one said that or your father or your mother or some uncle or some teacher or some guys laughed at you. They spoke behind your back. And why can it have such an impact on you? Instead of the practicing of truth, of how special, how valuable, how unique, how chosen you are by the God of this universe. Come on, practice truth, get into the truth and live according to your awesome value. Bring forth good works according to your awesome value in Christ. Then your works will have value. We're going nearly for a landing. But I say, Dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people that you may set forth. Everybody say, set forth. Set forth the wonderful deeds and display. You know, when I display, when I display something, it's I put this in front of me. I set forth, I display there. It's not, here I am and there's the display. It's not, I set forth. No, 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 I set forth. Are you with me? In front of me, I push in the front of my life, in front of my opinion, in front of my hurt, in front of my success, in front of my failure. I push in front of all of that. I push his wonderful deeds, the display of his splendor, the display of his virtues, the display of his awesome, awesome goodness and faithfulness. So never mind what you're going through. Royal priesthood, kings, priests, forever with Christ, have an eternal life tomorrow. So that tomorrow you will push in front of you God's goodness. 
don't hide behind things. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not like you must deal with rubbish and now you just, that is spiritual talk. That is manipulating the word of God. No, 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 that's arrogance. Don't go with that. No, you must open up. But the, because the pushing and the displaying of who he is comes from the heart. Not from the hands, from the heart. It works through the hands, but it comes from your heart. Amen. Okay, those ones. Because what? Him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Called you out of darkness. He has called you. Not chased you out of darkness. Unfortunately, by God's grace, many times circumstances chasing us out of darkness. But your God has called you. Sheep know the voice of their shepherd. He made you a sheep. And in that darkness, my brother, my sister, even if you're going through rubbish, you're going through the mud, you're going through a lot of turmoil, you just know in your spirit, you know, you know, you know, you know the voice of the shepherd. Hello? You know the voice of your shepherd. Be still, be still, be still, be still. And know, and you will understand what your shepherd is saying. Amen. He has caught you out of darkness into his marvelous light. When? When you gave your life to Christ, you came out of darkness into his marvelous light. But now your spirit is reborn. Your spirit is perfect. He must grow. He's immature, but he must grow into maturity. But he's perfect. Holy Spirit testifying your spirit. Amen. But now with my soul, with my emotions, there's some chachas that is still in darkness. With my thought patterns, with my behavior, with a lot of how I dealt with relationships. Some of that is still in darkness. But God, if you take the truth, God is calling everything. There will be a word over your emotions that will call that emotions out of darkness into his marvelous light to be healed, to be clean. A love that is clean. A love that is beautiful. You know the word love. But love and lust was connected. Love over the giving this lady say, I love you. And the lady say, I love you. And, 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 all, and all these things, you know, it was all manipulating to go and, what's the good word, carfufo, or to do this or to do that. Not one of you guys, I'm just saying in principle. I'm just saying in principle. But now you gave your life to Christ. But the word love is still in darkness. It's associated with all these other chachis. Now you must get into the word. What is love all about, Lord? Show me what is love all about. And suddenly the word washes you clean. Your soul, your emotions washes you clean. And suddenly when you say, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, it's clean. It's beautiful. It's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let him wash you clean and make your life beautiful. That your words bef before God is beautiful. Amen. Last one. I think so. Now if anyone builds on this foundation, the foundation of who Christ is, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. That's not um, literal, literally gold. That is the gold inside of you. That means there's gold inside of you. Finish. Finish. If Christ is in you, the, the highest definition of gold is in you. His words, who he is. There's nothing more valuable than him. So that what is in you, when you build with what God has given you, the gold, that what is majorly, majorly precious from heaven. When you build with that what is precious from heaven, it will stand. Now it says you're going to build with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Wood doesn't sound from the devil. Hay doesn't sound from the devil. Straw is not necessarily from the devil. Well, many beautiful beasts eat it. Okay, go on. Let's go on. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one work of what sort it is. And guys, building with the wood and all the stuff is not building with all the chachis that they will could give you. You build something for God, man. You build it in his name. You took all of that and you built it for God. But what you built for God is going to be burned away. 
Because you had to build with the gold from his mouth, from his heart. The gold, from the word of God. That what he sent you, the good works he has prepared for you that you've heard from God in advance. And that day, let's carry on first. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. A reward. The reward is not you will have a bigger crown and you will have a smaller crown. You will have more golden house and you will have more plastic house. And you will have more this. Whatever you received, whatever the reward, it is to have the awesome privilege to lay it down before God. Whatever crown you receive, it's to have the awesome privilege to lay it down. And say, worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy. Nothing of that will be a focus on you. All of that will be a focus and opportunity to worship him more. Amen. Next one. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. God will never leave you, never forsake you. He gave your life to Christ, you will go to heaven. But what you've done on earth, it will be burned away. Because it was your dead works, it was your idea, but it wasn't, it wasn't from God. Are you with me? And by His grace you will go to heaven. You will know you've wasted your life on earth. You'll not be condemned in heaven. Nobody will condemn you. Are you here? But come on, man. Let's not waste life on earth. Amen. Let not that day when we appear before God. be burned away all that we did with good intentions. But we were not... We were too lazy to sit with God and hear from Him and come to learn to know His voice, His principles. Are you with me? And it's not like get super spiritual and every time you must first pray three hours before you know, going to know what God is saying. The more you come to know the Word, the more you know His will. When you just read a little bit, a little bit, after you gave your life to Christ, you will just know Lying is a sin. I'm not going to lie anymore because he's the truth. I'm not going to swear anymore because that's not honorable before God. There's certain things that you know is God's will. Why? Because you got into the word or somebody told you when you were a baby. No, not a baby. Then, uh, a young child. Are you with me? So you don't have to pray if lying is a sin. You just know it. The more you get into the word, the less you need to pray about certain things. Is this now the word of God? Is this now the will of God? So that you can really accurately work, hear from God about specific things. Specific things that God has for your life. Amen. You're still here? He himself will be saved as through fire. So tomorrow... As you lay before God, bring your works into the light. Tomorrow, as you bring it before God, say, God, tomorrow let it be burnt away. That what is not from you. Not in that day. I don't want to waste Tuesday. But before Tuesday, burn away that is not from you. But help me to be open. If some leader come and tell me, or you tell me through the word, or some brother tell me, hey Amen, this is not right. This is not good. What you speak about others in this way is not good. When we planted the church, at one stage, there were some guys coming to us from the church where we came from, and they said, oh, from long ago we are praying that Creari will plant a church because they are, the other churches are so this and they this and they that and they that and they are that. And they. I said, you are not welcome here because you come with a lot of judgment. You come with a lot of pointing on the finger. That's not God guiding you here. Not at all. I said, go and pray, go and make right, and then pray if you must come or not. They said they went, they made right. Three years later, they were the first guys that left the church. <laughs> My fault. God, I had to follow it up with the other pastor. Did they come and make right with you guys? Did they come and say sorry for judging you guys? Are you here? Oh man, God must help us. God must help us. Guys, that we understand how to build with wisdom and not with foolishness our own thing. But let, 
allow, allow it that it will happen. At one stage in Kriari, it went very well while the church was shaken by a lot of things. Not, fi- not money for, for salaries, this not right, that not right, a lot of issues in the church. But with Kriari, it was just growing. And at one stage, like two, three, four years, that we went to more than 33 countries every year. Then we have a meeting and we say, okay, there's this opportunity to this three countries. Will you four or five quickly go and pray in the garden and find out from God if you guys must go? Come back and two says, yes, the rest. Okay, so next week we need to go because the opportunity is the week after that. And for some reason, just some air tickets, flight tickets appear. Not like through the roof, but... People just provide, and it's boom. And it was going good. And everybody would, and they would say, yeah, we are struggling. But at least with Kriari, it's going fine. And yo, 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 yo. And I got a check. I went to the leader. I said, no, I, I don't think you guys must talk like that anymore. And when we have a meeting, I want to hear the things that we do wrong. You as my leader, we need to stand together. We need to pray. We need to hear from God. What are we doing wrong to grow? Because I just checked that pride's going to come in. Are you with me? Enjoy when God is giving you success and provision. Give Him the glory. Give Him the honor. But ask Him, God, what is the purpose of this? Because these are only servants for your kingdom. This prosperity, this success, this provision is just servants. I didn't work for that. That must work for your kingdom. With me as the facilitator. Amen. God's going to help you, my brother, my sister, that you will labor in light. That you have the opportunity. So that where you come in and you open your mouth, light is shining. It's shining. It's shining against the darkness. And whatever the enemy, whatever plans he had, he was seeing clear what is his plans with this business, with this school, with this primary school, high school, with this city, with this... He has this plan. He can see clearly. But you come in, you open your mouth, and the enemy must, because the light is blinding him, and and he cannot fulfill his strategy, because God's word will go forth, and it will not return void. You speak in the name of Christ under the guidance of the Spirit. My brother, my sister, it will go forth. Anybody for an amen at least? We can say amen because when you open your mouth at least, you know, when you have your opinion, you won't believe it. You're not going to say, let me choose to open my mouth and give my opinion. It will just happen. Let's get more full of God so that we can say amen. You guys are supposed to say it much more than the, the lot of whiteies, you know. The other churches there, long ago, in the township even, when I would... <laughs> Go and do evangelism before 1994, and you get in the taxi. Oh, you pray because when it's red, it means you go. <whistles> oh, you never experienced that. Some of taxis that I went in. But, but bottom line, what did I want to say? I don't even know now. Amen. amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> you know, you come, and when you speak the word, it's immediately amen. No, I know we can say some things religiously. But it's something in the spirit. Yeah. And then you come to some whiteies in the church. They, they just sit like that. No, man. We must learn from one another. Amen? Come on. So do ladies, you need to help me. Amen? Amen. Yeah, man. Come on. Let's learn from one another. Okay. That was just to keep you busy because, you know... <laughs> I'm, I'm challenging you, please. Respect the light in you. Respect the light. Don't flirt with the darkness. Don't flirt. Don't think, you know, the, you find this guy. I can trust you, but don't say this to anybody. I want to speak to you about that guy. But don't tell anybody. Oh, you, you say, stop it. If you tell me, I must promise you, I can trust you that you will speak to nobody. I'm not saying that person must speak to everybody about your life, but... You must know that if you share something, that person must be able to share with a leader. Now, this is a difficult thing that I'm talking about. I'm not saying everything must be opened up. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. 
I'm saying trusting somebody in such a way that I call you into darkness that is me and you and me and you alone. You promised me, Pastor, I just really love you and I'm falling in love with you. You promised that we will not, you will not speak to anybody about this, eh? Uh, no, 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 no. So you need to be careful. You need to have a lot of wisdom. Are you with me in ministry? He's not, I can't, trust me, he's, he's my friend. He will, he will not tell. I, I'm still smoking and I smoke. I had some marijuana around the corner of the church. And uh, we've seen that when it grows up, you know, two months later. Can you believe it? They're not everyone, they're just two times. <laughs> what did I want to say? Bottom line. And say, I just want to tell you, uh, pray for me. Uh, I use marijuana, but uh, first of all, promise me you will not speak to anybody else about this. No, you cannot promise that. You cannot promise that. In discipleship, you cannot promise that. So it's a very fine line. We can talk about this another time. It's a very fine line. Because you must be able to trust that person that he will not just blast it open for everybody. But you know... If you would speak to me, and I don't know what to do, I will come back to you. But I must be able to speak to my spiritual father, Dr. Jonathan, about this. I have the situation. Not Pete Cookamore. I have the situation in my church about, with a person doing this and this and this. Oh, can you give me some wisdom what to do? And you must have the faith in me that if I don't know what to do, I, I will see God. And I will hear from my mentor, my spiritual father, what to do. That is where it's supposed to go. Don't look at me like a cow for a new gate. Is it not here? Okay, labor in light. May you fall in love with the light. May you understand you are safe in the light. And anybody doing something in darkness, like we said in the past, you don't trust that guy. You know you're supposed to do certain things, even students and leaders. You know, suppose you're, not, you're not supposed to do this, not after 10 do this, WhatsApps or do this, that. You position yourself in that way towards the other guy or the other girl. You're just telling that person, I'm not living a life in the light. I'm walking also, I'm okay with darkness. I'm okay with darkness. You don't trust that guy. He must grow in character. Amen. God, come and help us. Come and help us. That we will love the light. That we will understand in the light. We see the light. In your light. God, help us to understand we are not to be exposed in the light. Not to be shamed in the light. God, but to be set free in the beauty of your light. Where we can practice truth. Practice to bring our our works into the light so that what we do that has no value even genuinely we thought for you God that it will be shaken that we will deal with it please Lord help us to see that help us to grow as children of God not illegitimate but true children of God that receive discipline that we understand how to enjoy the light. I pray that for every man here, every woman here, to walk as a kingdom of priests, as kings and priests, with authority and intimacy. Give him a hunger for the truth. Give him a hunger for the light. We thank you for that, Father. You come and do that in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen.